morning to our viewers on Mac TV. It's a pleasure to be in conversation this Monday at noon with John Robertson. John, one of the newest members of Cricket Council USA, and of course, uh, the team owner as well. And he uh, is bringing this matter to the US Open, hoping to smash some sort of record. I don't know. He would be um, able to tell us more about that. Uh, good afternoon, John. How are you? Doing great. How are you, Vinod? How is the uh, power output there now? Uh, everything is wonderful now. Everything is uh, powered and uh, ready to go. It's great to see you. And uh, of course, uh, I know that uh, although we are in this uh, period of uh, quarantine at the moment, and this very dark period in the world's history, I'm sure that you are looking forward to better days ahead. Yes, we all are. Uh, tell us, uh, in your neck of the woods, what's the situation with the coronavirus as we speak? Well, uh, obviously, uh, Texas is one of the states also that are trying to find ways to get people back to work and get people out utilizing the uh, retail establishments and things of that nature. Obviously, we all need a haircut and we all need to get back out to the barber shops. I'm hearing that from all, all parts of Dallas. Yeah, so the, of course, uh, it's, it's great to hear that at least some sort of activity is uh, taking place because uh, the, the economy in most parts of the world has actually stalled. So at least uh, there is some movement, as you say, with the retailers. Yes. Yes, I agree. Uh, what, what's the situation, though, in terms of um, any positive news coming out of, of, of the Dallas area? Said that there could be a little stop with the retailers. Do you envisage anytime soon that other businesses will be opening up and uh, at least some forward movement could be had? Well, I think the key is the restaurants. I think the restaurants have been hurting, and then my wife is a nurse, and no elective surgeries have been allowed, and they're trying to get people back. Uh, there's a big backlog of elective surgery needs, and uh, my wife is supposedly supposed to go back as early as May the 8th at her hospital, and elective surgeries will begin. But uh, again, um, I, I think it's the restaurants and the healthcare workers and uh, so many of the smaller businesses that uh, have not been able to get the same loan packages that the larger companies have gotten. Yes, and um, that is definitely going to affect their establishment, and some may sadly uh, close down. Uh, but I guess uh, looking forward, we need all these uh, suppliers, so to speak, because they, they, they've become so important in the fabric of the community. As you said, it's thing that uh, is rare right now. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that last part. I was saying, you know, it's, it's, so, it's so crucial at this time to ignite at least some sections of the economy. Because of the fact that things are going at a snail pace and some of those... Well, I think sports has always been something to unite uh, a community. Uh, and that and being able to go back into the churches and things of that nature, uh, people obviously, you know, taking away the right to assemble, I think it's a problem that has occurred here with the, uh, with the virus. We're not able to assemble, we're not able to meet. And unlike 911, when everybody came together, now people are coming apart because we have to stay six feet apart. Yes, but to stay six feet apart, of course, it's necessary at this point in time. But I'm sure that you're hoping that uh, this does not continue for much longer because I know you won't come to uh, Fort Lauderdale to be with the boys at Cricket Council USA, of course, you being uh, one of the newest members. Yes, I'm so much looking forward to it. Uh, I, I enjoyed my meeting with Mac in Orlando, and I can't wait to get to Fort Lauderdale and re meet the rest of the board members. Uh, obviously, I know a few by uh, phone and by video, but I, I'd love to meet him in person. I'm a faith person. I'm a people person, and yes, I can't wait to travel. I, I was willing to travel a few weeks ago. Others were not as willing, 
but uh, I think there's a lot of us uh, many, many trips as soon as it opens up. Yeah. I know that uh, we still get a collaboration with Credit Council USA where you and Makoreshi were actually giving advice to in terms of business and supporting associates, how to keep afloat and what is in terms of the stimulus packages. How is that down from your end? Well, it's actually, uh, we're about to get a second round of stimulus package, which I think is another three to four hundred billion dollars. I'm a billion dollars. And I think that should help. Uh, it, it is geared to the healthcare workers. Small business owners still are lacking uh, funding, and I would like to see more come directly to the small business owner, and I know Mac would too. And uh, we've done everything we can with that seminar last Monday to help uh, the, uh, the other sports leagues as well as the athletes that seem to be in transition right now, both as free agents and as potential uh, draftees. Yes. Um, so that it will so fine because I want to put your energies elsewhere. You want to start putting things in place for the Dallas Smashers U.S. Open in December. I think that uh, there will be cricket in December. Yes, I'm, I'm looking forward to the U.S. Open Championship still being able to be uh, uh, played. And uh, we're, we're looking at even adding some more teams. Uh, uh, we're looking at other cities, other teams. I think this league can grow to 32 teams. Ultimately, I've noted the Australian Football League here in America, in the U.S., uh, has 42 teams, including 22 teams. So I think there's a lot of room to grow. And I, I think uh, between now and December, I think it gives us a great opportunity, maybe even to add some more cities and some more uh, ownership. And uh, I would like to see us grow to 32 teams. I think that's Max goal. Yes, and uh, tell us how difficult it is as a team owner right now to have that motivation to build your team, to meet with others, uh, whether it's a teleconferencing, whether it's Zoom, uh, to ignite that passion for this sport of cricket as you try to sell teams leading up to the US Open. Yes, that, that really is my goal, is the marketing brand in Dallas, Texas, the Dallas Smashers, but also being on the board to uh, market and brand cricket in the U.S. And I know uh, Max's passion and what he has done for cricket in the USA is just phenomenal. And obviously, I've caught his passion to be able to say, uh, let's take this to the United States and let's, let's grow this thing uh, to be one of the greatest leagues in America. And uh, I see uh, in Dallas, Texas, I'm getting a lot of support here from other sports uh, leagues and, and, and people that know marketing and branding and corporate sponsorships. We've got a whole row of companies, uh, what they call Headquarters Drive. There are so many headquarters in Dallas, and I believe many of these corporate people will want to come behind us as corporate sponsors, both locally and I believe nationally. But you definitely have your job cut out for you because the coronavirus has actually, I think, um, it has obviously made your job a lot more difficult, your job of marketing the U.S. Open. Well, I mean, I, I've enjoyed doing the Zoom calls, but I think all of us have made Zoom very, very wealthy right now, as well as every other conference uh, uh, facility. Uh, I think... I think we all are ready to meet face to face and have meetings in which we can uh, go and look at land, look at stadiums, meet new owners face to face. And uh, I'm just looking forward to being able to travel again and meet, meet with people and, and, and share the passion that I have for cricket and, and to share what I know about Mac. Uh, speaking about Mac, you've met with Mac obviously, and uh, what do you think about his contribution thus far to the development of cricket and people in the United States? Well, obviously, I don't think that there would be an Americanized game such as T20 without Mac. I mean, he pretty much put T20 together 
and has Americanized the game in which I think many, many people in the United States now can embrace. And uh, obviously, you know this, Vinod, that uh, he's put 40 to $50 million of his own money into developing and branding cricket in the United States. And uh, I'm just so impressed with everything he's done. And as a former sales and business development person, the most important thing that a person needs is a and I just love the product I have in, in the U.S. Open Cricket League and, and working with and for Mac. Well, it's a math league, and uh, if you know the world of cricket, some of the top players who have uh, played this uh, wonderful sport, they've passed through the U.S. Open over the last 11 years, and they again will be hoping to come uh, this December. Of course, you, uh, with your Dallas Smashers team, you'll be hoping to acquire the services of some of the top players, because to market the league, there's nothing better than having the best players playing it. Well, obviously, I'm very, very competitive. I'm very, very competitive. And obviously, I would like to be right there in the front row of this draft and knowing that uh, I'm going to have a selection of great, great players. And uh, Dallas, uh, Texas is known for great sports and, and being uh, having what we used to be called America's team. Well, we can be America's team for cricket now, too. Yes, definitely. So uh, I think that the Dallas Smashers will be a welcome addition to the U.S. Open. And uh, the people of uh, Dallas, I'm sure that you're hoping to bring glory to them, give them something to be happy about, especially given what they are going through at the moment. I think uh, come December, uh, should the U.S. Open take place, then a victory there could really be something of a gift to the people in your community? Well, I've been talking to Mac, and uh, obviously I'm so impressed with what's there in Broward County, and obviously many of the championships have been played in Broward County. But I would like to see Dallas be in position to maybe even take on the Nationals, because as Mac said, we're very centrally located to both the East Coast and the West Coast. And I feel like if we can develop and have a stadium uh, the likes of Broward County, we are also should be in line for not only a nationals, but maybe down the road, uh, a U.S. Open World Cup championship as yeah, well. Speaking of the U.S., yeah, that's wonderful. Speaking of the U.S. nationals, as well, as you know, that was postponed for the moment. That was supposed to be held from the, 13th, the 16th to the 19th of April, which would have been the past weekend. That is out of the window. But uh, Mark Rishi is hoping that he can still stage it, if not September, October or November, because uh, it, it's critical in the past. It has been critical for team owners like yourself. Is where you have to be some of the players who you have to employ for the bigger tournament, which is the U.S. Open. Yes, uh, again, the Nationals, I think, will be uh, a good uh, precursor to the U.S. Open Championship, and uh, I would like to see something done in Dallas in the future. But yes, I'd like to see our Dallas be in line for the U.S. Championship in December, have a great team put together and compete for that $100,000. Very competitive here. Uh, what has been the feedback so far, uh, John? I know you have been working in spite of all the uh, little long, uh, long and of course the quarantine. I know you have been working uh, very hard in getting people on board in terms of uh, teams and just getting that general interest with the U.S. Open. What has been the feedback from your end? Well, I, I can tell you the cities that are already ready to line up and, and be the next uh, U.S. Open uh, cricket league teams. Uh, we've got interest in Charlotte. We've got an interest in Palm Springs, Salt Lake City, Phoenix. Uh, possibly Nashville, and uh, talking to people here in Texas. I would like to see Texas develop uh, to have a lot of competition. Dallas, Houston, Austin, San Antonio, these are all possibilities, but not, and we could have not only a great uh, uh, amount of competition in Florida, but we can have some great teams here in Texas as well. I think that's wonderful because you have a great caption area there in Texas, and if it can happen there, I think it'll be a massive boost 
uh, to uh, the, the U.S. Open. I just want to switch a bit, uh, John. I know that um, you have been charged with certain responsibilities on behalf of Cricket Council USA. How does women cricket fit into that? Well, um, as uh, many people may know, we have an exceptional uh, woman in Los Angeles, that means the Los Angeles Lions, and she's being tasked to also develop the uh, the women's side of cricket. Her name is Dr. Christine Dumas, and uh, I communicate with her regularly, and I know that she's already had started to uh, uh, develop uh, opportunities for a stadium there in LA. Uh, she is very excited about establishing the Women's League, and in her past, she's done quite a bit of work on both the health side as well as sports on a national and a worldly basis for uh, national broadcast uh, companies. I think she's also going to be a big asset to Mac on um, Mac TV and being able to broaden the scope there for Mac TV and being able to get uh, a, a larger audience and, and a live audience. Uh, hopefully even for this year's U.S. Open Championship. Yeah, definitely that's a good idea. Of course, uh, Mac TV has made uh, generous strides uh, across the cricketing world. And in America, Mac TV broadcasts the most in terms of content of cricket in America. Right now, uh, there is um, everything online for everyone to see during this period. Mac Quirish has called on the employees of Mac TV to put out that extra effort to ensure that uh, America and the world sees exactly what's going on in America in terms of uh, cricket. What's your, your hope and aspirations in terms of uh, the Mac TV setup? Well, again, I, I think Mac TV is in great position to not only have a, a, a live broadcast, but to be able to obtain quite a bit of national sponsorship. The league and its value is all determined by not only number of teams, but also the type of TV contracts that, that they can have. Many of these lar larger leagues, uh, they're able to exist and, and maybe be able to start launching without audiences, basically because of their large TV contracts. I think with a nice uh, TV sponsorship, uh, package for Mac TV. Uh, I think it's only going to enhance the overall value and more exposure nationally. Yes, uh, definitely so. As uh, we at Mac TV look to develop the cricket with the younger. Right? What's the situation? Are some young people playing the sport? And if so, what can CC USC and Mac TV do to these youngsters to get them into the fold? Well, I think uh, with Mac originally starting Cricket Council USA, he really expanded cricket in America by developing the youth leagues and the 1,500 teams across America that would be more like club teams and, and uh, the uh, youth academies as well as the batting cages, et cetera. So I think he developed the infrastructure that, are, that is allowing everything to be done right now with the Premier League, because I think it's, it was the next step up. Uh, you had the uh, 1,500 teams playing at a club level, but I think there was a, a need to bring a Premier League so that people can see the best of the best. And I think it only gets the kids thinking, okay, I've got an opportunity. I can go to college. I can get a scholarship. I can become a professional cricket uh, league player. So. I, I think uh, what Mag did is he built the foundation. Now we're le ready to grow to the next level. And uh, guys like yourself have such a critical role to play in taking it to the, the next level. Mark has, you know, just been all uh, blood, sweat, and tears over the last 20 years or so in which he has uh, developed and tried to develop cricket in America. But now, you have uh, the guys like yourself coming on board just to take it to that, uh, the, the, that level. Mark has uh, actually put a very strong foundation in place. And now, if guys like yourself can take it to the next level, I think the uh, sky's the limit as far as cricket and cricket development in America is concerned. I, I agree. I mean, 
as I understand it, and um, people can correct me if I'm wrong, but I understand that cricket is going to be in the 2028 Olympics in LA. If that occurs, I think there's just going to be an explosion because people are going to see cricket at a whole new level when they start seeing it in, in the Olympics and seeing possibly even a U.S. team, seeing other countries compete, seeing the top players in the world, and then those top players in the world coming and competing at the U.S. Open Championship. I mean, this could be incredible boost, not only to our league, but for cricket in the United States. Yes, and of course, you know, there's this thinking that the Americans, they like the fast-paced sports. Right. And I don't know how, how much and how deep you've delved into cricket, but as uh, there is a five-day match, a match that goes to five days, and it could still end in a draw. That's a test match. Then you have the 50 overs in counter. That's a, a match comprising 100 overs, 50 overs each in each inning. And then you have the T20. The T20 that Matt brought to Palm Beach way back in the, in the late 90s is something that fits nicely into the fabric of the American sports psyche. Do you think? No question about it. I mean, the United States and the fans here in America are all about, about being able to watch the sport for two and a half, three hours, maybe not three days, but two and a half hours, I think it's good to go. I think what Mac has done in the youth, though, the most important thing is the youth coming up and learning the game and having these batting cages for after school programs. I think in every single community, the more we can do for the kids after school so that they've got options rather than just be in the malls and in the streets. Uh, Mac is, has, has really embraced and, and loves the youth. And I think the youth is the future of America. Well, there is the Midwest Cricket Council that falls under the umbrella of Cricket Council USC, and that's across in Chicago. Now there may be a uh, Western uh, a cricket council that may fall under you, John. Uh, and uh, these guys at Midwest, what they do, they look at development uh, across the board. So there may be a situation coming to you where you may have to take the sport into the schools. Um, how difficult is that in Dallas? Well, no, I don't think it's difficult at all. I've started to look at all of the college campus, campuses here locally. And for example, we have the University of North Texas in uh, Denton, and we also have one called University of Texas Arlington. These are campuses of, in UNT, 36,000 students. University of Texas Arlington, 39,000 students. They are very diverse uh, campuses with people from all over the world. UTA does have a cricket pitch. Uh, they are playing cricket. We would like to see cricket develop in a number of the universities here in uh, Dallas, and, and I'm sure it could develop in, in colleges and college leagues throughout the United States. That may be the next step that you're talking about, uh, Vinod, is uh, getting it in the colleges and the high school, et cetera, and let them, let them compete. I don't think it's too, too difficult to have a cricket pitch on some of these campuses. Yes, a lot indeed. Well, John, I want to thank you for spending some time with us today on the party. I want to also notice that we will be coming to you on a regular basis during this COVID-19 lockdown uh, because we are looking to keep that interest in the CCUSA, in the U.S. Open, in the U.S. Nationals, and what could be happening across in Dallas. I want to thank you sincerely. I wish you uh, a wonderful rest of well, I think it's great that Mac TV is broadcasting these games 24-7. I mean, I think it's even greater that's what, than what's happening in ESPN. I mean, you've got an audience of 90 to 110 million people loving cricket all over the world. And uh, for the people to see it around the world that no normally would watch cricket, now people in the United States can tune in, watch a cricket catch and say, wow, this is interesting. I can't wait to go see one of these games live. So I think it's great that Mac TV is putting the cricket game out there to give people an education and let them learn the game, even if they can come to a game live now. Yes, uh, John, well, again, thank you. And uh, 
once they log on to Mac TV, they can also see what John Robinson, Robertson has in store for them as well. Thank you, and we will be in touch. Thank you. Thank you, Vernon. It's been a pleasure. You have heard it there from John Robertson, one of the executive members of Cricket Council the USA, and of course, a team owner at the US Open. He owns the Dallas Smashers. Continue here on Math TV as we continue to provide you entertainment during this COVID-19. Which is the most authentic cricketing league in America? U.S. US Open, Open Cricket. Cricket. Which is the most exciting cricket in America? U.S. US Open, Open Cricket. Cricket. Which cricket league has the higher number of views in America? U.S. US Open, Open Cricket. Cricket. Which cricket league has the higher number of players in America? U.S. US Open, Open Cricket. cricket. Which cricket league has the higher number of teams in America? U.S. US Open, Open Cricket. cricket. Which cricket league has the higher number of cash prizes in America? U.S. US Open, Open Cricket. cricket. Get ready for the biggest cricketing event in America, U.S. Open Cricket 2020, from December 16th to December 20th, 2020, at the Central Broward Cricket Stadium, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. It'll be aired live on MAC-TV. Let's play 2020 in 2020.